Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at the final game of the 2019 Sinkfield Cup. This was a blitz game between Magnus Carlsen on the white end and Ding Lerin. These are the two who were tied after the regular event. 11 games of classical. They each had six and a half points. They were forced to play a tiebreak. Faster games. Two rapid games were played. Those were draws. Next up, a blitz game. And Dingler in won the first blitz game. And here is blitz game number two. Carlson now finds himself in a must-win situation. Okay, I'm drawing some attention to this because it plays a role in Carlson's decisions in this game. Uh, playing what's best in the computer's eyes is not going to be best in uh, many cases in this one. So he has to go all in. A draw is not going to be helpful. On board, we have a closed Ray Lopez. Typical play on the queen side. Black going after the light square bishop. Some tension in the center, somewhat released. There will be no pin on the knight. Rook e8. Moments away. Black is from making the capture and then having this coordinated pressure on e4. White says not so fast. So, center's closed. This last move now looks somewhat ridiculous by Black. Is it really a big deal that the Rook will now have to make another move before it's productive because there's no excitement happening on the e-file? It is closed. It's not really a big deal. Center's closed. Closed positions, not really so much a factor. This time element, there will be time to maneuver the pieces. Some clarification, something is still gained with this move. There is some clarification with the structure. We kind of have a better idea where the position or where the pieces should be positioned. Center's locked, play must ensue on the wings. Normally, where you have space, that's the side of the board you should be looking to play. And with this last move, white has space, we can say, on the queen side. One of the squares that sticks out to me about this position is c6. This is a reason to, in general, try and play on the same side of the board where you have space. There's a good chance you could maybe coordinate with that furthest advanced pawn of yours. So we could maybe see if white plays on the queen side in this position, maybe there's a chance one of the white pieces can arrive on c6 and be a great bother to the black side. As it turns out in this game and in this specific structure, it will actually be black who plays on the queen side of the board, where black is lacking space, whereas white will be playing on the king side. He's really going to go after, try to at least go after the black king's throat. Okay, where do we begin? Bishop d7. Important not to say to yourself, I have a6 and b5 in, let's fianchetto just to fianchetto, this would be bad for two reasons. One, you're biting on a rock. And two, you just got in the way of your knight. It may want to pivot on b7 quickly. Okay, in this game, it's bishop d7. Has an eye on one day maybe getting to the b5 square. Okay, from here, knight c3, queen b8. There's two thoughts that cross my mind when I see queen b8. One, Getting out of the way of the rook, so it could get to this only open file. Then two, you're getting out of the bishop's way. It may want to pivot on d8 and then go to b6. Keep in mind, it's this dark square bishop that is the bad bishop for black. Okay, from here, bishop d3 watches out. Watches out over this c4 square. If white simply continues to develop with bishop e3, That's your, this would be irritating. Hitting the bishop in pawn, you probably have to undo your move. Okay, so bishop d3 watches over the knight move, and also in general a good idea probably to get the minor pieces off of this only open file. Otherwise they're going to eventually feel some pressure by the major pieces. Okay, rook c8 follows. Knight e2. Knight b7, and here we go on this move 17, g4. g4, knight g3, right around the corner. Now, I have a pop quiz for you. 
Let's say g4 is not played here, and instead white continues to develop. This is considered one of the other top moves in this position for white. So let's say this is in here, and then black inserts this move h6, a flight square. Seems like a healthy move. What is your assessment of this position? What is the best move here for white? So feel free to try and answer maybe one of those two questions, maybe both. If you'd like to go ahead, pause the video, see what you come up with. Okay. This is actually a winning position for white, though I can't give you a specific variation that says, aha, that's why white's winning. Why is white winning in this position? Um, what is the best move for white in this position? It's b4. And this traps this knight. So it's not trapped in the sense, aha, okay, you don't have any great moves and soon I'm going to win the knight. It's more like now this Fianchetto knight simply, it will exist in the game, but not really live. It's completely dominated by pawns. So right now the B pawn is killing it. And if you try to go to the only other square you have access to, uh, this guy starts to laugh at you. <laughs> so wherever you go, one of these two pawns is killing the knight. So how else do you activate this guy? You have to bend over backwards. You have to move this, this knight, this pawn. There's weaknesses there. When you do that, just to get to this square, it's a, it's a struggling piece. So this is an important detail. G4 in this game, I should mention, first of all, I should mention that in this position right here, when b4 is played, black doesn't have a way to undermine this pawn. a5, white says, no problem, I can maintain this point. Chop, chop, this rook is defended. No problems. Pawn is maintained here. Your knight is dead. Still, black is playing down a piece. Okay, in our game, we have g4, and then the knight goes to c5. So you may be asking here, why doesn't white play b4? It's not the same, because this rook is not defended. And this point, in other words, could be undermined successfully in this position. a5 could, in other words, no longer be met with a3. Chop, you cannot recapture, you would lose the rook. So there's no controlling this knight. There was a reason I earlier threw in that term quickly when I said the knight may want to make use of b7 quickly. It's important that he is able to get to this square before he's boxed out with the b4 advance. Okay, in this game, g4 follows. Knight c5 straight away. Pressure on both bishop and pawn. E4 is defended. Black takes out the light square bishop. Now, this is the first moment. Black is on move, has that unopposed bishop, and immediately looks to put it to use. B4. With great effect. A skewer looking to win some material. Okay, black is, or white is out of that with rookie one. Queen B5. White needs to try and keep the queens on to keep open winning chances, ducks the queen exchange. And now black from here looking to double the rooks. Has that? This guy's trying to offset the rooks in a way. We'll see what the idea is here. Some controlling moves with g6. No forward knight moves. b3, here we go. The knight is ready to interfere with both rooks. Knight on c4. Black is ready to knock out the knight, though. He's anticipating knight c4. Knight c4, look at how quickly it's challenged. Bishop b5, knight a5. So, initially I was saying white is playing on the king side of the board, but we do have some play here now, some moves later. White is interacting with this furthest advanced pawn. Some coordination here on c6. From here, queen b8. Queen d2, 
There's pressure on b4. Rook c3. White tries to undermine the rook support with a3. Pawn takes pawn, and now we have this interference move. So black had to see this coming. It's going to be losing some material here, losing the exchange. Takes the knight. Queen takes rook, bishop takes pawn. So this guy is still an unopposed bishop. We have a passed pawn as well on a3. Bishop takes e4, g5. So this is, this had to be calculated right here. This decision, I believe, caught Carlson by surprise. This bishop takes e4. What is the idea that black has here? After bishop takes e4, g5, if you simply move the knight, you're going to lose the bishop. So can you spot what black's next move is? If you'd like to go ahead, pause the video. What does he come up with here? Okay, here we go. Bishop a8. Unopposed bishop. This bishop has knocked out both white center pawns. And next up, there is this idea to form a battery and go in for mate. So objectively best in this position is to go ahead and take the knight. But there would now be no better than a draw. So. In this game, what's played is queen takes pawn. If you take the knight, what is this draw exactly? Queen b7, this king has to take a hike. Black would go in for check. And basically, this is the best both sides can do from here. If you're going here, it's considered to be a win for black after bishop here. You know, the king ends up getting stuck in the center. Some ideas of check, rook entering stuff. Best in this position is some repetition of position. So, white has to try for something more. And he captures on a6 in this case. Now comes knight d5, bishop a7, queen c7, rook e to c1. And we have black give up the queen for the two rooks. This isn't considered best. Uh, turns out to be very nice. The the queen for two rooks in balance. Black ends up working very well, uh, coordinating very well with the light square bishop. Considered best in this position is to go into a pin. That's, that's really, especially for a blitz game, to pull a move off like that. You would have to foresee that after this, and then some move like queen d7 in here, you have a Pawn advance that distracts the major pieces from observing c6 and also c8. Okay, doesn't go into a pin. Gives up the queen for both rooks. Check on board. Nearby there could be a mate and this knight is there defending. But we could start to see this coordination on that h1 square now. From here bishop c6. From here queen takes a3. Considered Better is a3, still around an even position. Keeps the bishop out from uh, getting on this diagonal, really. Taking the pawn and then getting to f4. Putting the bishop on uh, a diagonal right next to the light square bishop. Okay, in this game is queen takes a3 on the rook. Bishop takes g5, and after white's next move, it's going to be a win for black. There's only one saving move here for white. If you'd like to go ahead, pause the video, see if you could spot what's considered the best move for white. Okay. In this game, queen takes d6 is played. Best move is considered knight e2. Not just about hitting the rook, but it's there to stop the bishop from getting to f4. It's ready to immediately take the bishop out if it goes there. And we'll, as we'll see, the bishop on f4 is really crushing. It really coordinates well with the other lights, with the other bishop. So in this game, it's queen takes d6. Bishop f4 had to be played knowing that there's a good reply to white's move here, bishop c5. And we reach this final moment of the game. There's only one more move. 
If Black doesn't spot this next move, if he hadn't calculated this next move, it would actually be White who's winning. <laughs> so, final pop quiz. Can you spot this beautiful final move by Black? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, here it is. 97. So, there was a, <laughs> there was a mate threat here by White. Queen F8. Knight e7 stops the mate in one threat and at the same time threatens a mate in one. This knight on g3 is pinned. This is a beautiful finish uh, to this, two th what was the 2019 Sinkfield Cup. White simply throws in the towel. There's nothing you can really do about this mate threat on h1. You have to basically throw away all of your pieces to stop mate. So what's considered one of the better lines here? This is considered best to give up the queen. That's going to go nowhere, of course. If you try to play f3 and then interfere with this rook getting to h1, that's not going to be helpful. Knight f5 and this knight is going to fall. Uh, what do you do about that? You can throw in a check. King g7. This is a main threat. And if you move the bishop, you're getting mated on h1. So white isn't a giant pickle. If you try h4, there goes the one piece, there goes another, and right around the corner, we have mate on h1 at the end of the day. So really a beautiful finish, I would say, to this uh, 2019 Sinkfield Cup to see that you have that move. After bishop f4, you have a great way to respond to bishop c5 Knight e7. Very, very nice finish to this one. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comments section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.